Okay, I'm here at the Playhouse on Friday night uh, with Dave from Razor. He's the guitarist and also the major songwriter. Welcome to Fredericton. Uh, is this the first time you've been out to the East Coast? Uh, I haven't heard tell of you guys coming out here before. So. Yeah, the furthest feast we've been before uh, is Quebec City, actually. Yeah, this is the first time out. How long have you been on tour and where has it taken you so far? Okay, the tour started on August 3rd. So we've been out since then. Uh, started in the southern Ontario, and uh, so far we've been uh, throughout most of Ontario, throughout most of the northeastern U.S. and uh, the East Coast. And we're getting ready to. How's the response been on the tour so far? Um, it's actually been better than I've expected up to this point. Okay, the the songs "American Luck" and "Violence Condone" talk about the longevity of the band and the lack of respect for Canadian talent south of the border. Uh, do you feel that bands are considered substandard by American record companies simply due to the fact that they're Canadian? Um, I don't think it's simply due to the fact that they're Canadian. But I think what happens is, is that if you are an American band, um, there's just far more uh, tools available to you for success. Uh, for example, there's a much greater number of cities much greater a number of people you can play to without having to you know go through getting the you know the the tasks of getting uh, immigration papers and things like that which take a long time to get um you, you've got like a lot of big cities you've got chicago and los angeles boston and uh, new york city uh you know and then you know cities like buffalo which you know they would be considered a big city in canada but buffalo is not even an importance in the u.s what i'm getting at is that there is a lot of places you can play there and that's that's really helpful and uh also, you know, it seems like uh, the whole, uh, the world's entertainment is pretty much focused on uh, New York and Los Angeles. Yeah, we gotta, they're, they're all ready, we just let them know. Six albums, <laughs> that's a, a lot of vinyl. Uh, I was surprised myself to learn the numbers were that high. And I've even been familiar with some of the earlier stuff, like Executioner's Song and Evil Invaders. Uh, how do you feel about the band's change in sound and style, or do you think that the sound has been the same all along? Well, no, the style's changed a lot. The last two records we've done really don't resemble the first four at all. Um, and plus, uh, you know, we have new musicians. The last two albums have been done with, with new lineups. I'm the only remaining original member. The first four albums were done, three of them were done for Attic Records in Toronto, and, uh, you know, uh, only saw limited release, uh, as well as the fourth one. Um, what I did was I overhauled the band in 1988, and since then we've, we've pursued a whole, a whole new style as far as I'm concerned. Some of the lyrics is, in some of the lyrics as well as your personal uh, editorial uh, in the liner notes, uh, I sense a lot of contempt for the metal scene at large, especially in the song Stabbed in the Back. Uh, I find a real hardcore punk influenced attitude of doing things your own way, uh, screw everyone else, really shining through. Uh, have you always felt like that, or has it grown out of frustration of the commercialization of the independent thrash metal scene? Yeah, that's, a, that's it. You summed it up better than, than anybody I've ever heard do it. What it is, is, is this, is that uh, about three or four years ago, there was a lot of really good, uh, heavy speed metal uh, being recorded. And... Uh, the last couple of years, it seems like every band uh, has become more experimental, more progressive, and has sort of deviated from what speed metal was supposed to mean in the first place, which was to mean you just play with speed. That's why it was called it. Um, and it seems like nowadays, uh, you know, like for example, there's a lot of new stuff I don't really care for, and it seems like a lot of these kids are offended if you tell them that you don't like it, they can't understand why you don't like something. Uh, if you find it boring because the songs are too long and maybe they have too much mellow passages, uh, I think that we're standing out as a little bit different uh, from everybody else that way these days. Is there any particular reason you decided to title the new album after the song Shotgun Justice? Was it to draw attention to the song itself or another reason? Um, actually, I came up with the title Shotgun Justice before I wrote the song. And I said, I like that title, I want that to be the title. And then I wrote a song so that I would have a title track. Well, not, <laughs> couldn't be done better than that, I guess. Uh, your hometown of Guelph, which is one I've visited many times, doesn't really conjure up memories for me of a place that would be home to such a powerful and long-lasting metal band like yourselves. 
Uh, do you find it difficult to survive as long as you have? Have you found it difficult to survive as long as you have in Guelph? No, it's actually it's not too bad there at all. It's just uh, uh, the good thing about it is is that uh, there's really not much going on there. So if you want a place where you can relax, that's the place to do it. And uh, as far as uh, you know, I know you. I, I wrote a song about Guelph on our final restitution album. It wasn't too flattering of the city, but I just did that because I wanted to get on the case of all my friends who live there. Where did Razor fit in in the metal picture? Do you see yourselves as having a leading role in the changing face of Canadian independent metal? Okay, I'm not sure about a leading role. I know this. We're, we're the best band for people who are really impatient to listen to because our songs are two and a half to three minutes long and they're really fast and we don't waste anybody's time. So if, if, if you fit that kind of description, then you'll get into our band. On the other hand, if you like you know, mellower music, you sh- certainly shouldn't uh, check us out because that would be a waste of your time. What's next in the cards for Razor? Um, well, we're almost uh, going to complete this thing. I think October 6th is going to be the end of this tour. And then we might do some extra U.S. things at the end of November, but then we're planning to actually complete writing and record our next album for January 1991. What's the change been like to from Attic Records to Fringe Product Records? Um, the, only, the only change is, is this. Uh, the, the biggest change was... Fringe pays us a lot more money, and that's really been the biggest change. And for that, I have much, uh, and Fringe also had a much better understanding of uh, what kind of music we are and, and the kind of people we should be talking to, you know, the kind of uh, radio stations, etc., press we should be trying to, uh, you know, get for the band. Attic was a little more concerned with, um, Attic's a type of label, actually, that wants you to write hits. And I mean, if you've heard our band, you know that hits isn't something we're ever going to come up with. And Attic would, you know, they would like, they, they like sign Lear, and they have Lear, and is a big money maker, and the Nylons are a big money maker, and they used to do, they did Teenage Head in the early 80s, you know, they did a lot of stuff, but they tried to make, you know, make, uh, base, base their success on hits. Fringe just puts albums out and uh, by bands that have cult followings and hopes to, uh, you know, make four or five records for a certain band instead of maybe just one hit record. Well, thanks a lot for the interview. Uh, this is I've been talking to Dave from Razor uh, down at the Playhouse on Friday, the seventh of September, uh, and the show is going to begin sometime soon. And I hope for everybody's money's worth, it'll be a good one. This is Dave Carlo from Razor, and you're listening to The Crazy Train on CHSR-FM, Fredericton, Stereo 97.9. This is Dave Carlo from Razor, and you're listening to CHSR-FM, Fredericton's Alternative. Okay, I'm here with Joe from Sacrifice. Uh, He's the lead guitarist, I believe, and... uh, how come there's been such a long delay since the release of Forward Determination for our next album? Um, well, when, when we started writing songs after, um, after the second album, we were all doing it like individually. Like I was writing a few and Rob was writing a few and stuff because we were like, like it was re- like real hard, hard times for us because Gus's dad just had a, a heart attack and... Um, you know, we couldn't really get together and, um, you know, work out stuff. So we, we took like a, a few months, a few months off before we started again. But, you know, we were just like really picky too about what songs we wrote and what, you know, what we wanted to be on the album. Like there's no filler songs this time. It was just, you know, every song that we wrote ended up on the album. You know, there wasn't anything where, well, we need some space for this or, you know, just make up a quick song for this part. We just never did that this time. So you don't think the new album will be an extension of Forward Determination? Well, well, it is. It is. It's it's still very much like it, you know. Same sounds and everything, but it's just, there's like a heavier progression to it. Like, you know, we just got better. Uh, we just got to learn each other's styles and and try to work work it into a song you know it's, it's something that like you know that a band it, it, like it takes time to to develop something like that in between bands you know like to get to know each other's playing so that you can 
write songs, like your own songs, you know? So do you consider yourself still to be a young band learning off each other's playing still? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're still like fairly young, like I'm the oldest, you know, at, at 23, and um, we're not much older than, than a lot of the other younger bands around and stuff, like Creator, I think is like the same age as we are. And, uh, How long has Sacrifice been together as a, as a unit? Um, since 82, a 82 or 83, we played our first show. The sound changed a lot since that first show. Or? Yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot. You know, we just, you know, with like putting out a, a couple albums and stuff, you just you know get to get some money together and buy you know better things, just to improve your sound and that. Is there any particular underlying theme or uh, message going to be contained throughout the next album? No, not really. They're just like in individual songs. There's no concepts, no nothing like that, you know. Not necessarily a concept band, then. No, no. Like I, I like stuff like that a lot. Like I'm a big Rush fan, and and I love, I love the stuff they do, like the earlier stuff, anyway. But I don't think I can. I don't have enough talent to write something like that, anyway. <laughs> do you have any plans to go over and tour in Europe? Um, hopefully, when this album comes out, and. Uh, you know, we get some some attention and, and that from from European press and, and the people. Then we'll probably go over, but it's hard to say when though. I I remember seeing you guys playing St. John in '87. Uh, at that show, there was some violence that came out and some damage ensued. Do you think there there might be too much violence erupting at concerts these days? Well, it, it really depends on you know on, on the show. Like some shows, you know, most of the shows we ever play are like all ages, right? No drinking. And so, you know, everybody's like, you know, all mellowed out and stuff. But like when we play like, you know, <clears throat> drinking shows, you know, people get like rowdy when they're drunk and, and stuff like that, right? It just depends, really. It rarely happens. You know, usually it's controlled and stuff. Do you, do you think you'll ever go in the same direction uh, like bands like Voivod, changing your sound totally 180 degrees? Do you feel it's that maybe you've done that already since you were formed in 82 and it's no, now eight years later? Ever since I started playing, I always, you know, played like stuff that I, music that I wanted to hear, right? And, and I'm, I'm still doing that now, like, you know. I wouldn't be, like, writing these songs if I didn't think they were, like, you know, the, the greatest or anything. Not to be, like, you know, big-headed about it or nothing, but I think what, I, what, I'm, what we're playing now in the band is, like, my ideal form of music, you know? Uh, I know a lot of... I've seen interviews where a lot of magazines tend to picture you as the flagship Canadian thrash metal band. Uh probably due to the the higher success that sacrifice has over several other bands uh do you think how how well do you th do you think uh, other canadian thrash metal bands are faring uh in strides with your success um <clears throat> well voivod seems to be really happening now and um uh, annihilator i don't know if you've heard of them from from vancouver they're really happening like they like those two bands have like bigger deals than we have, you know, and um, like they've gone across to Europe and stuff. We have, but I don't know. <laughs> Do you feel that Fringe Product is is the the label for you to get where you want to be, or, or are they just a stepping stone to? Well, yeah, yeah, basically, you know, because. In order to be heard, you got to put something out, right? And they were willing to take a chance on us when we first started, which is which is really cool because you know we appreciate that a lot, you know, because a lot of a, a lot of labels and stuff look down on oh, another one of these bands type deal, right? But they they help they helped us, you know, they pushed us uh, to as far as they can. But now we're, we're we're just shopping around now, looking for for something better, you know. So the new album won't be on Fringe then? Yeah, this one will be. This is our last album with Fringe. But um, we're still looking for a distributor in the States and um, in Europe. Do you think the thrash metal scene is 
gotten to its peak and is dying off? No, it's like like all forms of music, you know, like it, it fluctuates, you know, like um, early '80s there, you know, it was the the metal scene was like pretty underground, and there was like you know big upsurge of dance and, and and stuff like that, but you know in the mid '80s metal started to take over, right? And and now it's just slowly coming down again. It'll it'll end up coming back up. It, it's like it just it just fluctuates, you know. It just depends because like you know so like a lot of the bands now that are coming out are it's it's kind of stale. Like you've heard it all before type thing, right? Then you know s- something will come out again soon that's different, and it'll just take off again. That's that's what that's what happened when Metallica came out, you know. Uh, you're on tour with Razor now. Uh, how long have you been on tour with them? Do you plan to continue on with them for a couple of months or the rest of this tour that they're doing? Well, we've been on tour for <coughs> excuse me for three weeks. Um, we did a few dates in the States and, and Southern Ontario and stuff. But um, all this month we're, we're going across Canada. And uh, I think November or December we should be hitting the States for, for an American tour. Yeah, but... Yeah, they're like I, I've known Razor since they first started. You know, I've seen their first show, and that uh, they're they're cool guys. You know, and they're just cool to, to tour with and hang out with and stuff. They're they're a lot like us. You know. Do you, how's the tour been going so far? Do you do, it's a, been relatively successful? How's how's the audience been responding to yeah, your shows? It's, it's been pretty cool. Like uh, like a lot of people, I, I I'm surprised to get like really get into it you know because like i've never ever been like this far out well this far but <clears throat> when we played in um halifax the uh, the other night man that like that was the farthest we've ever gone you know and and the, the crowd response was was incredible i couldn't i couldn't believe it it was great you know do you think that there's a big difference in audiences from the west coast to the east coast yeah i find that um as you go farther out west, they're more like uh, like American crowds, you know. How's that? Well, they all have their their like own favorite songs and stuff. Like it, it's always it's always the same. Like like from from Calgary on on out west, everybody's always yelling out. Everybody's always yelling out Sorry, like. Can I get, you get over from Calgary on? Okay, from from Calgary on. Like, a, a lot of the, the cities we play, like, just people in the crowd yelling out always, like, all the same songs, right? And out here, out out, out east, it, it's like that, too. Probably reanimation. Yeah, yeah, it is more more of that out here. But it, it's cool, though, because, like, you know, when we're out east, we're working on, on a, a set list, you know, and then when we start going out west, we're working on a different set list, you know, just so, like, people can, can hear what, you know, what they want to hear and stuff. Well, what do you think of Much Music's Dan Gallagher? Well, he's from he's from the same uh, area as we are in, in Scarborough. He's he's a pretty nice guy. He's he's all right. He's cool. A bit a bit corny sometimes, but <laughs> he's he's all right. He's an all right guy though. Okay. Well, thanks for the interview. This I've been talking with Joe. He's the lead guitarist from Sacrifice, playing down here at the Playhouse on the seventh of September. Uh, yet to go on, should be a good show.